Hello, this video looks at finding the mean and variance of a random variable with a given probability density function. Now, another way to say mean is the expected value of the random variable. So you don't have to check and see whether or not it is a probability density function. You're told that it is. But it's only on the interval from 1 to infinity that the function is that particular function. Otherwise, the function is 0. I know it's not said there, but that's how it's understood. Okay, so you don't have to worry about x's from 1 to infinity. All right, so how do you calculate the mean? Well, there's a formula for it. The formula is that we have to take the probability density function and multiply it by x and then integrate that officially over the entire real line, but since the function is zero for anything from minus infinity up to one, then we only integrate from one to infinity. Okay, so we have an improper integral. Fine, but look inside, it's not that bad. It's, you know, some algebra can fix this up where we just, you know, it's just a polynomial type integral where you just use a power rule in reverse. So x times x to the negative five halves would be x to the negative three halves. But remember, it's improper, so we have to introduce a limit and let a variable then approach infinity. But the antiderivative is going to be you add 1 to that and divide by the same thing. So if you're at negative 3 halves and you add 1, you'll be at negative 1 half. But if you divide by negative 1 half, it's the same thing as multiplying by negative 2. So there we have it, our antiderivative. We're ready to plug a b in and plug a 1 in, but... It'd be better for us if we actually put the negative exponent in the denominator with the positive exponent. So we're going to call the 2's going to cancel. We're going to call this negative 3 over rad x. Put the b in. Put the 1 in. Let the b go off to infinity. And yeah, negative 3 divided by the square root of a very large number is going to head towards 0 the larger the number gets. So that part's going to go to 0. It's going to converge. And the answer is going to be exactly three. All right, great. Now we're asked for the variance. There's two formulas that you can use for the variance. The standard formula is taking x, subtracting the mean, squaring that, and then multiplying that by the probability density function. I prefer the, the other formula where you take x squared times the probability density function, integrate that, and then afterwards subtract the mean squared. That, that works out best. Because you just did integration of x times f of x. Now you're integrating x squared times f of x. And the algebra's going to work, you know, similarly. We're going to end up bringing in a limit. And when we have x squared and x to the negative 5 halves, that's going to end up as x to the negative 1 half. Okay? And the mean was 3, so a minus the 9. Okay? Well, wait a minute, though. When you go into to find the antiderivative of x to the negative one half, when you add one to it, you get x to the half. And dividing by a half, still multiplying by two. Now what's gonna happen is, the difference between these two calculations is in the first one, we had a negative exponent after integrating. That pushed us to the denominator so it can blow up and go to zero because the numerator was a constant. Now we just have a square root of x. And when we go off to infinity, the square root's going to go off to infinity. So this is a rare occurrence where you have a defined mean, but when it comes to variance, the integral is not defined. The integral for variance is not defined. Okay, the variance does not exist is how we officially report the answer. It's possible. It's okay. Don't worry. It happens. All right. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. You can reach me at calcoach.com. You can comment down below, like, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.